All right, first up, we have the 2018 46 Reserve. Um, where should we start with this wine? I suppose we could start at the start, which would be the 2013 vintage. Uh, that's the first vintage we made any reserve wines here. We featured a uh, 46 and a hedge reserve. Uh, it took off, staff members loved it, uh, the club members loved it. So it's something that we immediately kind of knew we would be continuing on with. Uh, and here we find ourselves at the 2018 vintage uh, that you'll be tasting today, carrying on that tradition. The 46 Reserve is a really fun reserve wine to look at over the years. It really, to me, has the most movement vintage to vintage. And it makes sense given that, that it's a blend really of, of Syrah and Grenache backed by that Moved. We've got a lot of wiggle room kind of based on what we want to highlight for each vintage. 2018 vintage is an interesting story that way because no varietal really had a wheat growing season that season. We had a really long harvest. We had a long hang time with everything. Uh, we had some pretty ideal weather through harvest that benefited the Syrah, the Grenache, and the Moved. So we had nothing to turn to at first and say, this is our building block for the blend. So speaking of blend specifics, uh, this blend breaks down at 47% Syrah, 42% Grenache, and 11% Moved. Uh, you can check my math on that, straight out up to 100. Uh, you know, we started off, like I said, with kind of a more of a 46 base, um, traditional base, which would be kind of just about those equal parts, Grenache, uh, Syrah, with some Moved in it. Um, we started adding, a, we added a pretty robust Syrah lot to it to kind of add to the mid palate of the wine. Um, the wine then got a little heavy feeling. So we also introduced a whole cluster barrel fermented Grenache lot as well. Um, that did a couple things. It brightened the wine up a little bit um, and it kind of made the wine lead with that nice uh, youthful acidity. That's that first Grenache step I was talking about. Uh, and, but it has this sneaky building tannin profile that it gets from the whole cluster fermentation. So you don't even really notice it as it first starts accumulating, but it's kind of like this crushed velvet texture that continues to build on the palate, continues to build on the palate as you get to the finish. So a winemaking component that, you know, I could really highlight with regards to any of these reserve wines would be the barrel component. Um, like I mentioned, a lot of decisions are made here uh, in the cellar. You know, we're tasting through the barrels, we're taking those notes, and a lot of what that has to do with is, is the interaction between the aromatics and the flavors and the tannins that the barrel's bringing with those aromatics, flavors, and tannins uh, that, the, that the wine already has in it naturally. So we're always looking to define oak barrels that, that really highlight, that really uh, bring to life some of our favorite components. You know, we wanna highlight those bright red fruits, um, you know, with things like baking spices, with cola, um, with a brambly spice, and we can highlight that with, with certain barrels we're selecting. You know, we can, we can add to the overall experience of those bright fruits and those other spices by you know, selecting a barrel that's got a really nice uh, you know, caramel component or bacon fat component. And so we, we you know, pick and choose as we're going into barrel with blends. Um, we get the chance with these reserves to then double back, find what really we felt like worked for us, what really highlighted everything and, and combine those and create the reserve wines from those favorite barrels. All right, so I'm gonna hop into the wine for a second. I can't let you guys have all the fun. Uh, really out the gate, I love the nose on a GSM blend. It shouldn't come as any surprise because I work here in Paso. Uh, we're home to some fantastic GSM blends, uh, but it just has this uh, balance of awesome fruit, really pretty floral components, and a really nice like savory spice um, that just is alluring. Uh, it just kind of you know pulls you into the glass. Uh, and this is firing on all those cylinders. As I mentioned before, definitely steps forward with that, that Grenache foot first. Uh, really beautiful acidity, nice and juicy out the gate. Uh, and it has that slowly building tannin profile I was talking about before as well. Uh, you know, it's sneaky. It doesn't really hop up on you at first, but kind of these velvety tannins are building on your palate as you're sipping on the wine, as you're lapping it up. Uh, and by the tail end there, I couldn't quite get words out immediately. Um, uh, so definitely present tannins, not overbearing in any way, um, but a very elegant uh, rendition of a GSM wine here. All right, so the last question I'm gonna touch on that I get asked really often is how long should I hold on to this wine for? 
Uh, and there's a really easy answer to that. If you enjoyed it like I enjoyed it, then tomorrow's a good day to enjoy it as well. And the day after that's also a good day to enjoy it as well. And anytime next week, um, you know, we make the wines in all honesty to where it's not, you're not gonna be penalized for opening it early. Uh, they're not over extracted. We're not, we're not hunting for that profile of wine. Um, so anytime is a good time to enjoy it. Uh, if you want to sell the wine, there's a couple windows I like to hit. Um, one is probably the five to seven year window with a wine like this. Um, I find that in that window, the finish on the wine is, is, you know, softens really nicely. The acid on the wine starts to soften pretty nicely. Uh, and you start getting this complexity of some of these aging aromatics and flavor components coming into the wine. You still have the fresh fruit profile, which is something that I really like in these blends from Paso. Uh, and so it's, it tends to be a nice best of both worlds. Some, some aging components, some complexity to it, some nice softening of the wine at the five to seven year mark. The next one, and we're gonna jump fast forward 10 to 12, where you're really looking for a lot of those earthy and spicy components to, to be singing on the wine. All right, next up, we have the Five Blocks Reserve. Uh, so you can hop on that video or it should be the next video in your feed.